It can drive you nuts. What do you do when your teenager is out of control? I've got a special guest to help fill us in on just that. Brock Matthews is a Live On Purpose certified coach. That's right. And he knows some things about this because it's not that long ago that you were a teen. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a lot more recently than for me. Yeah. So what, what do we do with an out of control teenager? First thing to understand is what is there to control? You have your teen and you have you. What are you in control of and what's your teen in control of? Now they're getting older, they're gonna have more control, right? Brock, you know what? You just nailed something because it's all about control. Even as we introduce this topic today, what do you do when your teenager is out of control, yeah. right? So there's this control issue and some things you control and other things you don't. Right. And so a lot of the times when we feel like our teen is acting out of control, it's actually because we're not in control of them. And so when we right. see that they are making bad choices, we feel like they're out of control. And you know what? I, I've done this exercise sometimes with parents in my office where we make a T chart, you know, so that if you can just picture a great big capital T and at the top of one column, you put your name. At the top of the other column, you put your teenager's name. And then you start listing under that everything that you control right. about your teenager's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they realize things really quickly. Right. And so luckily, the teen wants the things that we control and we want to be able to control the teen. And so we can trade those two lists. Can we hit some examples around that? Yeah. Because I'm thinking how this usually plays out. Mm -hmm. What are mom and dad concerned about? Good choices. Good choices, like what are they doing with school? Mm -hmm. uh, how are they handling themselves with friends or around the issues of substances right. or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And guess whose list all of those things are on? The teens, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But that's exactly. what mom and dad want. Well, what do the kids want? And, and I think you said earlier, well, the kids want to have some freedom, some control over their own life, right? right. Mm -hmm. So who controls that kid's access to telecommunications? Parents. For example. Oh, that's on the parents list. Transportation is parents too. Transportation. What, what you provide basically right. as a parent. That's what you control. Right. Exactly. And you might be thinking, you know what? I don't control anything about my teen's life. Well, you don't control the things you're concerned about, but you do control things that your teens are concerned about. The second point I want to touch on is the discipline. Discipline needs to be feel like it's not happening at all. And so what I like to do or teach the parents to do is sit down and figure out what the teen wants, and be clear about what your expectations are. You know, Brock, you're hitting on another really important topic here, and that's communication. Right. Because even though we're talking about discipline, we're talking about discipline with a teenager. Right. And you know what? I can't tell you how many parents have come to my office and they're like, Dr. Paul, this is not my kid. He's doing this and he's doing that. And, he's... and I'm like, you're right. It's not your kid. It's your teenager. We have to remember that their bodies are going out of control. Hormones are out of control. Their appetite, girls and boys are losing cooties. They don't know what's going on either. And so we need to remember and understand, yeah, those teenage years were hard and we need to be patient with them and, and understand that. Yeah. And they're different from childhood mm -hmm. in a lot of really important ways. So this communication element, you said sit down with them and talk to them. Right. Now, a little disclaimer here, who controls whether your teenager is willing to sit down with you. Your teenager. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right? So they might refuse. And there's ways to handle that too, because we right. go back to our list of what it is that we control. Mm -hmm. and, and then we use that to encourage a conversation. Right. I love what you're saying here, Brock, because once you get a communication started where we're actually sharing real ideas and your teenager is able to do some thinking that your kid wasn't able to do, that gives us a basis for setting up the transaction. Right. What is important is when the teenager feels like there's no discipline, when the parent sit that sits down 
and the teenager sits down and is clear and concise about what the rules are and what happens when they get broken. And so when they make good choices, they get rewarded with resources. When they make bad choices, they're clear on what's going to happen if those choices are made. And now they can't be mad at you because they agreed on the, on the punishment. There's another powerful element here that comes from the psychology of this whole thing. Right. So as a parent, let's just establish this right now. You are a benevolent, generous, loving, positive parent. And that's important because you're not going to take anything away. No, we're not taking anything away. We are making things available depending on the choice of our teenager. Do you hear the difference there? And it sometimes feels like the same thing. You know, like, well, if I don't do my, my homework, then you're going to take my phone away. Right. We just switch that enough that it feels like the phone is available to you when right. or if. Right. Do you hear that subtle difference? Yeah. I'd like to share a story. When I was a young, out of control teenager, I had a filthy habit of slamming a door when I was upset. So my parents uh. sat down with me and said, look, this is a problem. We need to fix it. What happens next time you slam the door? And I thought and said, well, um, you can take my door away. And so me as an out of control teenager, like to test my parents last next fight, slam the door. I came home the next day. There was no door. And it triggered some thinking, didn't it? Right. And what did I have to do to get my door back? Well, my parents said, okay, well, you broke the door. And so you need to pay for that door. And so I had to work and do what was necessary in order to earn my door back. I see a number of powerful elements here. Right. First of all, you might be thinking, okay, but if, if I ever did that with my teenager, I'd have a fight on my hands. But Brock, you pointed out that the communication happened. Right. There was a communication beforehand you came up with. I was aware of what was going to happen. And you knew that it was inappropriate to slam doors. I did. But as a teenager, it's hard to control your behaviors and your emotions sometimes. Right. So that communication actually put you in a position where you were able to accept the consequence. Right. I was only mad at myself. <laughs> and you learned something from it. Right. Brock, we've, we've had a couple of good ideas that have come through. I think it comes down to a really basic assumption that parents are actually valuable mm -hmm. to their teenagers and teenagers are actually valuable to their parents. Right. And if the, I think if both parties understood that, yeah. it would be easier to arrange some of these exchanges that we've been talking about right. uh, mm -hmm. around the discipline. Right. What have you noticed about the value? Well, I have noticed um, parents are very valuable to their teenagers. The teenagers just don't want to admit that. Oh, good point. They um, are learning and they want to do things for themselves and they're learning how to be adults and they don't want to ask for help sometimes. The good thing is, is that teenagers can also be valuable to the parents. Sometimes it feels yeah. like teenagers are just sucking all the resources, the gas, the food, the time, mm -hmm. the energy. All the, the stuff parents. the parents are providing. Right, exactly. But we can also use the teenagers to get done some of the things that we need to and have them pull some of the weight around the house. You know what? I've seen so many teenagers have the lights go on when they realize they have something to offer, mm -hmm. something that is really valuable to the parents. And you're, you're starting a conversation here about, hey, they could do some things around the house. They're very capable of doing, of contributing in right. some meaningful ways. But it's more than that for the parents because you think about what the parents really value. And as a parent, what is it that you want? A slave? No. You want your teenager to be making good, mature choices. Now, if you're a teenager watching this, I hope the lights just went on. Because for you to do that is enormously valuable to your parents. And they've already proven to you that they're willing to provide all kinds of luxury. Parents are usually really generous towards teenagers as long as they're doing what they want. Teenagers can also use to get a little bit more if they use if they help parents get what they need. It's an exchange. Mm -hmm. Economics. There yeah. you go. For example, I have a story. I was driving um, a really old '89 Honda Accord in high school, 
and it got me back and forth from school, but I wanted something more. I went to my dad and said, dad, I want a new truck. And he said, okay, well, that's going to cost a little bit of money out of my pocket unless you're going to go get a job. And I said, I can't get a, go get a job. And so he said, I will help you pay for the truck. If you help me do the yard work, it's going to cost me however much money a month. So if you do the yard work, I can put that money towards your truck. And so we had a little transaction there. Yeah. Hopefully that's helpful to you. You may know of some other parents who would appreciate this video or some teenagers who need to hear from Brock. You can connect with Brock and our other Live On Purpose coaches at liveonpurpose.coach where you'll find access to other coaches who are trained in these models and can help you with what you need. Also, if you haven't checked out the Parenting Power Up yet, you'll want to do that. We've got some links here in the description or right over there on the side. Click on that and see what we have to offer for you to become more confident as a parent.